My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. Beginning on May 1st, we will be releasing, in addition to our normal episodes, a series of five videos which will be a virtual tour of the Antique Boat Museum in Clayton, New York. You can look forward to seeing some unusual things. The nice thing about this Thixoflex is I used this, I don't know, a week ago maybe. You just pop this one off, throw it away. Put a new one on. And you're ready to go. If you actually watch it here, start to squirt it out. You'll see it flowing up through these tubes right here. And that's where it mixes together is in that mixing tip. Okay, back to where I started to try to get going a few minutes ago. Pop this rib up so we have room to epoxy. So we're just trying to make a little gap here so we can get the epoxy in there. We don't want to try to force it in, we want it to be in there and then squish out towards the outside. So we'll run a right, nice bead down the middle, inside here. I want this to almost be bedded in, I don't want any gaps. So what we're hoping for is when we put the screw in and tighten it down, I'm putting another little bead on the outside, when we tighten it down we want a good squish coming out the sides and we don't waste that because we can use that on the next one and the only time we ended up with a little bit extra is on the last one last rib we do I'll put one down the outside of this one now this caulk gun holds pressure against the epoxy so if I just set it there and don't release the pressure it's still squirting in there I don't have to keep squeezing on it that should be enough. Pull this out carefully. Yeah, we're gonna have a good squeeze there. So what I'll do is tighten the screws here, 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 and here before I put the, um, I'll get them all the way down so this is drawing in. I don't wanna drill a hole and have this here and then try to suck the rib back. I want the rib back and in place before I attach it there. So I will go outside and do that right now, outside the boat. Now just check that it's sucked in there against the wall before I go any farther. Yep, now we're down to the water line. So we'll make our switch over to silicone bronze. Next one's a screw, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Bottom of six is a screw. One, two, three, four, five. Bottom of six, yes. When I say it's a screw, I mean it's a machine screw. One, two, three, four, five. 
Bottom of six, that should be it. Thought I drilled that. Must have just been slightly moved from messing with it. Now, when I put this screw in, I don't want to go in all the way to the bottom of the countersink because the size of this drill bit is drilling a hole where the threads on this screw are just barely catching it. So if I try to, if I put the nut on when it's almost tight, it won't have room to draw it down because you'll see when it's in there. It's gotta be tightened down and then drawn down. Yep, that's digging in. Now I'm gonna move you guys inside there to watch it finish up. Now, with any luck, I am going to right now on the outside of the boat tighten this screw and hopefully it's going to draw this together and you're going to get a good squish of epoxy there. Looks pretty good. Now, you'll notice that there's stainless steel here. All these are going to be pulled back out and replaced after the epoxy cures when I get the silicone bronze machine screws in that I ordered. Okay, now we'll clean this up a little bit. Looks like we do have one gap there. I'm going to make sure that epoxy is forced into that gap. Well, this is going to be fun. I'm going to router out the top of this piece and see how bad it actually is. It's going to be a little bit dusty and miserable under there. It's over 75 degrees in here. It's the first day I actually had to open up the door and leave it open. So uh, I'm not looking forward to this, but I want to know what's going on. I'm using the router to remove about three quarters of an inch off the top, cleaning it up with a large slick or chisel afterwards. The beam is mahogany, so it's pretty easy to work with. This removed the rotted area. I'm going to epoxy a new piece on top after I flip the boat over and make sure the other side of the beam isn't rotted. I like to get something done every day, but some days it's all I can do just to get my butt out in the boat shed. So I'll pick something like Scraping off this shear clamp, getting the varnish off, getting it cleaned up. It's got to be done. So I got it done. got the gas tank here. This is the vent hole. We're going to plug that. The filler hole we're going to tighten down. Because what we're going to do is fill this. We're not going to fill it. We're going to put some apple cider vinegar in here and some old hex nuts and we're going to put this into the cement mixer and spin it around for a while and even though it's pretty darn clean inside we want to get rid of the last little bit of varnish and stuff that's in there but it's in amazingly good shape it's really fairly clean this isn't awkward at all trying to angle of this and but as you can see it's not too awful bad but there is a film in there that i'm hoping to get rid of wish me luck one thing we're putting in is some old hex nuts
And the other thing is a bunch of stainless steel screws. I'll try to put some of them in the gas tank. And next, apple cider vinegar. This ought to be interesting. We're gonna put some pieces of wood in there too. Let's try this again. Now what we may have to do later on is spin this around so it gets this end too because I doubt anything's in there but it's working the other end right now. So we'll do that later. Well that's not gonna work. That's not gonna pour out of there, dummy. Now, we didn't do this side nearly as long. It's gotta go back in there. It's not as clean, and I want it to be as clean. Okay, we've got more of those out there sitting out in the yard. But before we cut those up and do all that work, let's see what we end up with when we actually take these boards apart. We're going to run them through the table saw and make them narrower. That will hopefully make them flatter and they'll get both sides, we'll get the sides parallel. And then we're going to try ripping them in half. We're going to resaw them this way. And we're going to see if we end up with something thick enough to make a ceiling out of. That's the hope. ended up with 16 boards for the ceilings out of that one section of the boat it's out there with the table saw that we cut up so I think with the other three or four pieces that we have of the boat we're gonna end up with enough to do all the ceilings in this Chris craft okay it's a little windy right now so you might hear some wind noise but Wanted to open this package up because I think I know what it is. This is from Sticker Mule, where we get our stickers from. And we also get Sticker Mule. The new Wooden Boat Experience Packing Tape. Pretty sweet. If you look very closely here, you can see there's some remnants of gray and white paint in there. And down at this end, where I've been working on it, I've gotten rid of most of it. And then I'll, I'm gonna put some life caulk in there to finish it off. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you varnish over that, it's really gonna show.
And there's that last Dutchman. Doesn't look bad. A little bit of scraper there, I think. The problem with this, when you use 5200 on something like this, even when you have a super tight fit, you'll get this little squeeze out that's hard to... So 5200 doesn't sand very well. It's kind of rubbery. It likes to stick up a little higher than the surrounding wood. So sometimes you got to come in, hit it with a scraper a little bit. Take that little bit off of there. Then re-sand again. I can live with that. Now we're gonna seal this last thing and a couple of little holes up here. Okay, let's open this stuff up. This is a new package of it, but I've used it before. I like this to fill small areas when I'm only, only little areas, not really big areas. But it works really well and it seems to stain up pretty good. Doesn't look like, certainly doesn't look like wood if you use it on a big area, but in a small area you can get by with it. You can get these plastic cans open. Now I have let this stuff sit around for a while before, and um, when I opened it up that time, it sat for quite a while, six, eight months. And when I opened it up, the ammonia smell was really, really strong, almost overpowering. So be careful of that. I don't know if I did something wrong in the way I stored it or what, but it was just crazy how much it smelled when I opened the thing up. And I don't remember which one it was, the brown or the white. Neither of them really smells much right now. You put equal parts in. And you mix it together. Little tip I learned from tips from a shipwright. Scrape it off, push it in at that edge. It makes a little bulge there, which you can sand off later, which is much easier than going in four different times to try to fill that hole in. So get as much as you can in the hole. And on your last one, a little bit extra. Right at the edge, push. And don't try to scrape it all off. Just leave that knob up there. So we need to get this in place first, and then I'll explain to you what I'm trying to do. Okay, so this is the seat rail, and I'm not sure that that's the right word for it, but that's what I'm, a right name for it, that's what I'm going to call it. So the seat rail goes in this place, and the seat, which you can see right here, where the paint isn't, the seat obviously was right here before. So the seat goes on top of this, goes across to the other one. And there's also a support in the middle. What I want to do, because we pulled this dash plywood out, there's no way to get this dash plywood in once we put this rail in right now. And that's going to be a problem, because I want to get this back part put back together more and I can't do it right now if I got to worry about putting this dash plywood back in. So what I'm going to do is cut a scarf right in the middle of where the seat goes where it won't show and I'm going to cut it right across where it screws in so the outside piece captures the inside piece and the hole goes through both of them. So the reason I put this there was just to make sure that this is the right spot for it and to know that I'm cutting in the right place. 
So I don't know if I will epoxy this scarf later on or if I'll just screw it together. There's going to be a lot holding it because of the seat being here and everything. Now it also looks like there was another board here that possibly the seat sits up on top of this. So there may be another board because there's screw holes here and here, but not here. So I'm really not sure. I'll have to look at it and do some measuring. Um, but either way, this will be hidden from view because the back of the seat will go right here. You'd have to look under the seat to see this. So you're just not going to see it. So I'm going to kind of make a mark here and then I'll figure it out more permanently when I get it back out of here. And next I'm going to have to strip the other one get that one on that side. I want to get these all tied in, help tie this together before I flip the boat over. We'll get it up in the air a little bit. And we're also going to run into a problem of it starting to pinch in a second, so we'll put a couple clamps on. Boy, that gas tank spinning around out there is a little annoying. Yeah, it's pinching. So there's the holes in the middle. And then this one has the holes here. So we'll put this together. That's going to trap that. The seat will be here. Nobody will be the wiser. Of course, a little clean up. We don't want to leave those rough edges. I'm going to go back and countersink all these and put them in. But before I do that, I want to show you one thing. So like we talked about before, this back area is not going to be where the seat is. That is just going to be a, um, a set of boards that cover up the gas tank back there. The seat is actually going to be at the back of the motor cover here on top of this again and facing the back of the boat. To me, it always seems weird that a person sitting in the back of the boat has to look at the driver and the windshield and everything that's in front of them when the best view is backwards. So that's how I'm changing this boat. Plus, it's just a little tiny bit wider here for the seat so you have a little bit more room. The front seat will still obviously face forward. The motor cover will be in the middle. But the motor cover is going to be different. It's not gonna be the original where you clamshell it up. The top will still lift up but I think somehow this seat will fold down and um, the sides may come out of place. The, it may be more of separate pieces than a motor cover normally is there. Well, I'll figure that out when I get to that point. But the other thing we're going to do is, even when these are painted, if they were varnished, I wouldn't mind the ribs and the back of the straight showing. But obviously, I'm not stripping this whole thing down to just wood. It wouldn't look that good anyway. So what I'm going to do is paint all this, but then we are going to cover that up. And you'll see this in a lot of boats, but not normally in a sea skiff like this. Normally in a sea skiff, this part shows. So I'm going to add what is called in a boat ceilings. These boards that I showed you that I was making, these thin mahogany boards that we got reclaimed out of that old boat, will go here. Now these boards are short, you're telling me. Okay, I understand that, but remember this back seat is going to be about here and then the front seat, the back of that seat is going to be about here. So essentially what we have is three sections where it needs ceilings on each side. So these ceilings will go in like this and then between each of them there'll be a gap. So what you end up with is about a coverage of three inches per board. So you'll see that one like that, and then this one like this, and they will go all the way up to here. Now, whoops, the floor on this boat comes about to right there. So we will have another board similar to this one running right down here, and then on top of that, there will be probably two, if we can, if we can make it work, we'll do two, two ceiling boards there. So the ceiling boards will start down there, continue up here, and the whole sides of the boat will be covered and finished bright. And I think it'll be a really nice look. Um, it's not normal for a sea skiff, 
but as you have seen right along, we're not doing everything exactly the way a sea skiff was. But I think it's going to be really cool looking. What I really wanted to do was something that shepherd boats, those of you that know shepherd boats, used to do this with some of their models. Where in here, they would put a solid sheet of plywood. Now, they didn't have this board right here. The plywood would go all the way down. The board might have been there. It might have been covered up. And it looks really good with that plywood. But they were getting a lot better plywood than you get now. I mean, it was, it was gorgeous mahogany plywood. I felt that the ceilings, the separate boards, plus the fact that essentially other than my labor, I'm getting them for free, was a better choice for me. So that's what we're going to do on this. And I have a really special thing planned for the back that I want to tell you guys about yet. But it's going to be pretty cool and unusual. I'll be working on that probably in a couple weeks. Also, there is a viewer named, let me get you guys out of here. A viewer named Ted. Did I just mess you up? No. So Ted has asked me several times, I think, I think it's been a couple times, about the hull numbers. And there's one right there on that board. S stands for uh, C skiff, SK. And then you've got 18 for the length and 125 is the hull number. So I found it there. It's actually right here and it's very hard to see. But if you really look at it right through here, there's 18 right there. And the SK is in here. It's hard to see and the 125 is down there. This is on that stringer. And also, you can see it up there on the support for the bow light. As you saw earlier, that was brand new, clean apple cider vinegar. There's not a heck of a lot in that filter, but obviously that's really dirty. And we still got to get all the screws out and everything. So I'm sure by the time we get it all out, oh, well, here's what the screws and nuts look like when they come out of there. Not to mention the ones that are on the ground from the tank falling off of there while I was going to do something. And here's what the apple cider vinegar looks like that came out of there. So, pretty dirty. And in a second, I will show you what it looks like inside the tank as best I can. Well, it's not perfect, but that's pretty darn good. 